if you've got switches like this on your uh, in your house and you're wanting to upgrade to a smart switch, the chances are that you're going to have the same problem that I have, and that is there is no neutral in here. Um, so after a lot of searching, I managed to find somebody that supplies a no neutral switch, and it came today. So I'm going to uh, open it up and let you see what's in there and get started on changing this over. So it's uh -huh. this, which looks like yep, instructions. Uh, a lot of people. I don't like reading these, but I would say it's probably a good idea to have a read at these ones. Switch. Which is a smart home Wi-Fi and it works with the EWI. Is that how you say that? EWI link? Is that, that's what it works with, that app. Let's see what's in here. One gang switch, so that's just for uh, a single switch operation. It's not two way; it's, it's a one way, one gang. So it's basically the simplest form of switch uh, that you can get. And for most for most rooms, that'll be absolutely ample. And in here we have got a set of tiny instructions okay yep good for how you read maybe later though yeah okay and this is the light itself the light and a capacitor now this this they recommend that you fit this to your lights in the ceiling rows um, and what it does is it stops any flicker that you get from LED bulbs. Um, so you've got the capacitor, you've got this the screws and you've got the light itself which looks pretty neat. Um, it has, it's reasonably deep actually, it's not too bad, it's not crazy. Yeah, that should fit in my backing box and we have got just two connections the live and L2 that is it simple as that so one of these switch can run 300 watts so you just need to be careful how many lights you've got on 300 should be plenty for most people's lights Obviously check your power requirements, um, also check how deep your backing box is and make sure that that's going to fit in, like this sits on the surface of your wall so what's on display is this, this cross section here, that's the glass front, so yeah it looks, looks quite nice, so what we need to do is detach the glass from the back and then we'll see exactly what's going on it looks pretty simple looks like you just put in a screwdriver into there yeah if you just put it in there and there that should release so there's your panel Is the glass. So I'm going to now see if this will fit on my light switch. Okay so the first thing to do is um, before you even touch this is switch off the power so I'm going to do that now. Now, 
a good way to test this is to obviously when this switch isn't switched on the light you should have no power in here okay. the best way to check that is with a multimeter and we have yeah okay so in this one we've got two wires going in going into a live and then the white one coming out so this is quite an old setup by the look of it um, this is a common which is a live in most systems you only have one cable so in yours uh, if you're lucky you'll have a nice simple one wire coming in one wire going out so basically what you want to do is disconnect this so that is our L2 you don't want to, you don't want to mix them up and then this is the common which is the two lives in this case which in most other cases will be just one wire it's not as simple as I thought it was going to be for the video now you see my backing box is, is quite far in um, I do have quite a lot of room in there I'm just going to tuck them out of the way and just check that that fits and it does and my screws line up but they're really far in um, I'm not sure if the new if the new screws are going to reach that but I've got the old screws just in case so I'm going to put the red one in first to L1 I'll just tighten that up and then I'm going to put this one into L2 it's really simple um, you just want your live one which will be marked up as common in your switch and it should be the correct cable so actually I'm going to actually put it in this way around that actually fits, fits quite well and what we'll do is get the screws I'm going to use the old screws so that's it, it's going on now I'm going to put the, them in, I'm using the old I'm just using the old uh, screws because uh, they seem to fit in the, the holes better so I'm just using the old ones just want to get that nice and straight and in position to cover up the sort of mess of paint that's made there so I'm just putting them and then you just you want it tight but not overly tight you don't want to warp the back plate in any way like you don't want to bend this um, so that seems to be it try and work out which way around this goes it looks like that way it just hangs on there and pushes on and that's it that's us, that's it fitted now I'm going to just try the power and see if it actually works and then if we get any flicker from the lights you will deal with that now oh, it's uh, want to pair up so it's a bit in the pairing mode straight away, so I'm just need to um, download the EWI app. Okay, to connect this up to the Wi-Fi, it's flashing just now, it's not it's not connected. I am the right, I have changed my router to 2.4. 2.4 gigahertz so that it's uh, so it will communicate with us because mine automatically goes to 5 and my phone was picking up 5 so I've got to drop it to 2.4 gigahertz I'm now going to put it into pairing mode which should just be a matter of holding my finger a small beep and that's it, should be in pairing mode uh, I'm now connecting 
trying to connect with the device. Don't know if you can see that. So it's trying to connect. It can take up to three minutes. Found a second generation device. Registering. My device. Okay, so I'm going to call that. Kitchen lights. I don't know if you can see that. So, if I press it on. Ooh. And the lights are on. Okay, so now I can work it manually. It's red means it's on, blue's off, and a uh, on. It's actually quite fast, almost instantaneous, but I can already see a problem with my lights. That's what's happening when it's off. Uh, put it on. Okay, on, it's absolutely fine. Off. That one there just keeps staying on. So this is a capacitor and it goes across the live and neutral of the light. Um, so I'm just about to go up and have a look at that now. So this is a different setup from most people's. So that's a live and neutral there. I'm going to just connect that in like that. And that should be, that should uh, get rid of any light flicker that I'm experiencing. It's been connected across the live and neutral with the uh, capacitor. So, um, I just need to clean it up here, tape up that cable connector, and then we're good to give it a bash and see if the flash has stopped. This light here, um, which is an older LED type light, um, this doesn't work with that switch. This was constantly flashing, even with, even with the capacitor in. So just bear that in mind. Most of them are that type. So this is still hanging off the ceiling at the moment, but we're just uh, making sure everything works, and it seems to work perfectly now. Brilliant. That's it, seems to be working perfectly. Switch off, kitchen light switch. Switch on, kitchen light switch. All working, all good, good to go. So when you're fitting the capacitor, if you've got a light like this, um, and you don't know electrics, it'd be a good idea to get a professional electrician in to fit this for you. It's been designed for the British market and just having no neutral at your light switch and it works really well. I'm quite impressed once you put that capacitor in. Um, obviously I was having bother with this light here which was flashing consistently and when I took that bulb out the rest of them would all flash, so that capacitor is pretty essential. So if you've got like a ceiling rose up there, that would be much easier than uh, an actual light fitting like that. So um, something to consider if you're not um, confident with electrics at all, then probably want to get somebody professional in to do it. It doesn't take long to fit them, but obviously if you have your neutral at your light switch, if you have your neutral there, then you are laughing. Um, you can get much cheaper switches. This switch is pretty expensive. It comes in about, um, it's over £40, including the delivery. So uh, it's about 37 I think. I'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. It's not the cheapest switch in the market, but it's certainly the easiest to fit um, when you are when you don't have a, a neutral in here. So, I would say, probably if you want smart switches in your home, this is definitely 
the way it go.